Let's start with a premise. People, at least the vast majority of them, want to feel as if their work is important. They want to contribute to success, and they don't want to simply check their head at the door and take up space. This is a good thing, because you as a leader have a responsibility to develop others, leverage your resources to accomplish the work, and to create an environment that engages people to volunteer their commitment. One of the most effective tools you can use to fulfill your responsibility and allow others to contribute is delegation and empowerment. At this point, you may be thinking, one tool? Aren't delegation and empowerment two different things? Well, yes and no. Delegation and empowerment are, in reality, two ends of a continuum that leverages resources, develops others, and allows people to feel as if they are contributing. But there are important differences. So in this session, we'll look at the differences between delegation and empowerment. We'll discuss when you should use each one. And we'll examine the four criteria you can use as a leader to determine when you should delegate and when you should empower. The key difference between delegation and empowerment comes down to one important factor. Who is in control? Or put another way, how much autonomy does the individual have in the job? Here's an easy way to think about it. You delegate tasks. You empower people to exercise control to achieve a desired result. Let's break down the differences in more detail. Delegation has tight boundaries and often a prescribed course of action. The ultimate delegated task is one where the leader gives specific direction and the follower carries it out as directed. With delegation, you own the responsibility for deciding what, how, and when things are done. Empowerment, on the other hand, has loose or even no boundaries. The ultimate example of empowerment is the leader presenting a goal to be accomplished or a decision to be made and then allowing the follower to determine and execute the course of action with limited or no further involvement for the leader. With empowerment, the follower owns the responsibility for deciding what, how, and when things are done within the agreed upon boundaries. Here's a specific example. Let's say that you want your teenage son or daughter to prepare the evening meal for the family. If you're delegating the task, you will determine the menu, provide direction on specific ingredients, and the recipe to be used, and even set a goal on when the meal is to be ready for consumption. If you're empowering your teenager to provide the evening meal, you allow them to have complete control over what's served, how it's prepared, and when it's served. Your only direction is setting the goal and probably establishing some broad boundaries such as budget or the fact that it has to accommodate your food allergies. The difference, as we discussed earlier, is all about a continuum of autonomy and control. Between the endpoints of pure delegation and total empowerment, there are several options. You could delegate the task and set the menu, but empower your teenager to determine the order in which the meal is prepared. You could allow your son or daughter to recommend several menu options and then you decide the best choice. You could also solicit recommendations and then decide together. There are three factors you must consider when deciding if you want to delegate or empower. One. The follower's knowledge, skills, and abilities. The more extensive the individual's capacity to make and execute a course of action without your involvement, the more you can move toward the empowerment end of the continuum. Two, the amount of control and autonomy that is required to complete the goal or task. Some tasks are very prescribed, such as completing a specific report. And in those situations, you are really delegating the task not empowering a result. And three, the amount of control and autonomy that you 
are willing to give. There are leaders who feel as if they must be involved in every decision and activity. They will tell you that the people on their team don't have the necessary knowledge, skills, or abilities. But the truth is that they are unwilling to give up control. If you are one of those leaders, you must work to overcome that tendency to micromanage everything and everyone. Most important, if there are certain projects or assignments that are so important that you can't let them go, be open and honest about your need to stay involved. There are four things that must be present regardless if you choose to delegate or to empower. One, clear understanding of the goal or task to be completed, including time frames, budget restrictions, and quality levels. Two, clear understanding of the boundaries and authority. Three, the necessary knowledge and skills to accomplish the goal or task. And four, your trust that the individual will perform and potentially fail in pursuit of success at the goal or task. Remember, people want to feel as if their work is important. They want to contribute to success and they don't want to simply check their head at the door and take up space. Your job is to develop others, to leverage your resources to accomplish the work, and to create an environment that engages people to volunteer their commitment. You can do both by giving people appropriate levels of control and autonomy with delegation and empowerment.